Yo, what's good, y'all? It's your boy, Jess B, and welcome to the Jess B Show. Now, wait, this is not a regular episode, y'all. This is the very first episode of Civil Discourse with my girl, Anaya Brown. I know y'all remember Miss Anaya Brown over here. That's Miss Juneteenth, Nevada. If you ain't heard about her, you about to hear about her today. Today's episode topic is Black Lives Matter verse all lives matter Ooh, we i know y'all about to have a lot to say about this one so feel free to engage y'all we want you to comment we want you to tell us how you feel send a little hearts the little reacts whatever it is let's have this conversation yo first i want to introduce my girl anaya brown right here what's up anaya how you doing today hi i'm so excited to be here i'm doing awesome that's what's up do me a favor sweetheart and just tell the people a little bit about yourself well, my name is Anaya Brown. I am a 20-year-old college student majoring in government with an emphasis in legal studies. Um, I am the current reigning Miss Juneteenth Nevada, and I'm really excited to be a part of this civil discourse project. I think that it's going to allow for us to have some very much needed conversation. Yeah, yeah. Big ups to her, man. Make sure y'all go and follow her everywhere. You can type in Anaya Brown, look for that pretty face with the crown, and then boom, you got it. Next up, we got my main man's right here, Mr. Rodney. How you doing, sir? He got a little delay, y'all. It's all good. We're going to work it out. <laughs> Oh, you got a major delay. I am <laughs> doing well. How's everybody out there? How's everybody on the panel? Thank you so much. Oh, shoot. Hold up, hold up. Y'all, we having a little bit of technical difficulties with Mr. Rodney, so we'll go on here and go to my boy right here. What's your name again, brother? Uh, this is Martin Walker. Martin Walker. How you doing today, brother? All right, peace, brother. That's what's up, man. Tell them a little bit about yourself. What you do for, you know, just give them, give them the rap. Uh, well, I am on the board member, one of the board members of Black Cosmos uh, here in Las Vegas. Uh, we are we're stressing on, on civic in, uh, engagement, political power, economic power. Uh, we have aspirations to see us with the, um, uh, another Black Wall Street. We're into collaborating with like-minded, ethical people who are looking to upbuild and lift uh, our, our black community, support black businesses. Um, we, we're not stressing over, as uh, as Claude, Dr. Claude Anson talks about horizontal uh, issues, just building our community and forget about the separation of really lynch uh, uh, garbage. Nice, man. I respect it. It seemed uh, Mr. Rodney jumped back then. He jumped back in. There, there we go. He having a little a little difficulty. Hey Anaya, if 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 maybe if you oh you on your phone, huh? <laughs> Never mind. I was gonna say maybe text him and see if he wanna jump in on the next combo. Cause it seems like he's gonna keep cutting out. But I don't think texting from your phone will be smart. It might kick you off. So we just gonna roll with it, right? Yeah. <laughs> we'll just roll with it for the most part, right? So I wanted to put this slogan out here. Um I read something. And it said that all lives matter is a slogan that has come to be associated with criticism of black, the black lives matter movement. Right. So starting with, uh, I mean, well, let's start with you. And I says, this is your series. Um, what, what does black lives matter mean? Just what's the meaning of it? So black lives matter is actually a global organization in the U S the UK and I believe Canada, um, with a mission to eradicate white supremacy, by building local power to intervene between conflicts um, inflicted on black communities by the state and by uh, local vigilantes. So the whole mission behind Black Lives Matter is to present the fact that at, the, at this current moment, black lives do not matter. Um, we are disproportionately affected by a lot of systemic oppression um, fueled by racism and America's history with slavery. Um, and so that's, that's what black, black lives matter is. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Y'all heard it from the queen. Y'all heard it from Miss Juneteenth, Nevada. I'm just saying, Martin, what's your opinion, brother? What does black lives matter for you? 
Black Lives Matter for me, um, especially, I think I have a, a even somewhat of a unique view because when I was living in Sacramento, I was a member of, of um, that chapter of Black Lives Matter. Um, Black Lives Matter to me focuses on not an anti-white uh, situation, but just the focus on the, the economic uh, suppression, the the supremacy, the uh, lack of equal justice in the penal system, the prison population, the police brutality, anything that has to do with us not getting not just civil rights treatment, but human rights treatment as uh, African-American people in this country. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Let me see. Hold on. Let me see. Who is this? Shaquilla? Uh, yes, um, uh, Rodney Smith invited me, and I'm sorry I'm late, so oh, don't okay. mind me. I apologize for my tardiness. All right, well, do me a favor. Uh, it's, it's Shaquilla, right? Uh, Shaquilla. Yes. Shaquilla. Okay. Okay, Shaquilla. Yes. Okay, my bad. Do me a favor and let the let the audience know who you are, what you do, that type of stuff. Just a small introduction. Uh, okay, let me just then so you can see where uh, where I'm at. So my name is Shaquilla Ilex. I've been living here for three years now. I'm a teacher at an elementary school currently, and I live um, in uh, West North Las Vegas. Got you, got you, got you. I ain't in West North. I'm more like Northeast, I think. But hey, we are part of the same, same community. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, well, it's definitely nice to have you. Uh, since you just jumped on, what does Black Lives, Black Lives mean for you? Wow. Um, that's such a, a great question. I think for me, Black Lives means um, that we come together and that we embrace justice and all manners of justice in our culture. And I don't think that those two are separate, but I do think that sometimes we we don't um, make the connection. Our, our lives here is about justice and about um, connecting to our lineage of, of great civilizations and also about um, and extending that legacy or the remembrance and uh, uh, just bringing it back to where we are now. So I think we definitely have to get back to our roots and, and celebrate who we are and who we've always been. Okay, okay, yeah. You know they say black is strong. We the strongest. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> most definitely, most definitely. Well, welcome to the Just Be Show and welcome to this series. I definitely Thank appreciate you. you chiming in. I was unaware that so many people was going to chime in, but I love the interaction. I love for everybody to jump on. Anaya, this is going to be a hell of a show, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> so, Anaya, since this show is your particular series, I want you to tell me, when was Black Lives Matter, when was the movement created? So, Black Lives Matter was created in 2013, yes. 2013, after the acquittal of Trayvon Martin's um, murderer was acquitted of all of his charges. Okay. Two, you said 2013? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Now, I'm sure you guys out there in the audience remember what happened to, to the young Trayvon Martin. That shit was insane. It was insane what happened. It was insane about how they went about things. So now you know when and why Black Lives Matter was created. Yo, do me a favor, everybody that's listening or watching or viewing, whatever y'all want to call it, and start a watch party, yo. Uh, yo, let's spread this message. Let me see if we got a comment. Rodney Smith, I can see and hear everyone now. Got you, got you, got you. Um, hold on, let me jump back real quick. All right, so we, we've already discussed what the movement was about. Um, Anaya, you pretty much covered that. Um, and Martin, I mean, you pretty much covered it, too. So let, let's go on the on the other side of it. What what does all lives matter mean? Martin, let's start with you. <laughs> I think people who um, if I matter of fact, let, let's let's tie that to blue lives matter okay. uh, as well. Uh, people who say all lives matter, of course, every every sentient being deserves basic human and civil rights. So all lives matter, absolutely. But 
all lives are not the ones who have who endure systemic racism. All lives are not those who don't have automatically have privilege or get uh, lesser sentences when they go before a judge. All lives don't uh, go can can can't go into a bank and get a loan uh, just because they they somebody know their grandfather. Uh, so yes, all lives matter as as human decency, but black lives again, for the sake of the context, it is is really about not about anti anyone else or anti any other life. It's about bringing attention to to the systemic situation that we endure in, in this country, well around the world, but we're talking about this country. Beautiful, beautiful, well put, sir. Well put. Much respect to you. Um, Shaquilla, is she still there? Yes, I'm still here. Oh, oh, cool, no problem. What does all lives matter mean to you? Uh, well, I think I agree, uh, completely with Martin, and um, that we have been traditionally overlooked, disenfranchised, and I think that when we say uh, Blue Lives Matter, I think we dismiss the, the systemic racism that's been rampant in the, in the police department forever. And we need to understand how saying things like Blue Lives Matter actually undermines the movement, as well as gives credence to the, 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 the racist um, traditions and culture that they, that they stand behind. Got you, got you. Definitely hear you. I definitely, sister, I hear you. Woo! I hear you. <clears throat> Miss Anaya Brown. Yes. What does All Lives Matter mean for you, girl? Uh, for me, All Lives Matter is just a counter response to an actual issue. I think that All Lives Matter is a just a quick response to sweep. Oh, we lost her, y'all. We oh, lost, we lost her. her. Yep, it's all good, up, man. I, I was actually feeling what she was saying, I, so I, I was I was almost ready to finish that sentence for her. <laughs> Go a, ahead. Uh, if you feel like you can finish it. <laughs> I mean, she's right. I think it's a knee-jerk reaction to dismiss what we deal with and act like we're only talking about Black Lives Matter. But but as, as many signs say, black we never said all lives don't matter, and we never said all lives. Black lives are the only ones that matter, but it's right. just it's it's a knee jerk reaction to 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 defer and to dismiss what we're really talking about. Got you, got you, Anaya. He went on ahead and finished that sentence for you. You cut out on us. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but black folks stay together. We stick together. We stand tall. <laughs> so he finished it. He got you, young lady. He got you. So Thank does anybody you. know when All Lives Matter was all, even created? All anybody can matter. answer. When was All Lives Matter created? Has well, it been why? created? Why was it? Why was it created? Oh. Uh, I, I would say probably back to what, what I just. Go ahead, Queen. Um, I first heard of it um, from a football player. I don't remember which one, but they had asked him a question about um, some police brutality issue, and he made the statement that all lives mattered and that um, pretty much the whole Black Lives Matter movement was um, dramatic. That's what it was. Gotcha. What, was, it, was it, do you remember if it was uh, um, what, what race he was, the football player? Right. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I definitely feel you there. That's pretty messed up. So, you know, this whole particular topic, this episode is to figure out, you know, Black Lives Matter versus All Lives Matter. So why is All Lives Matter so problematic, like against Black Lives Matter? Why, why is it such a, a huge deal? Like, let, let's really get into it. Anything y'all want to say, just... Let me know. Um, Anaya, you the queen of the show. Let's start with you. So I think that All Lives Matter is problematic because it ignores a, a very long history of oppression. Um, I would go as far as to say that oppression has been a, a building block of the nation. 
And so even though slavery has ended, black people are still suffering and we're reaping the consequences of systems in America that further oppress us. We see it in education, we see it in the laws that we write, we see it in our justice system all the time. Um, and so when we see that we're being disproportionately affected and we're being killed more, we're being mistreated more, um, and we're being discriminated against, it's drastically different how we're being treated compared to other ethnicities um, within the nation. So All Lives Matter pretty much ignores all of these truths and again, sweep everything underneath the rug under a fake notion that we all matter equally. Got you, got you, got you. Mr. Martin. I think, I think it, again, it's, it's a knee jerk reaction um, and I'll tie it to cognitive dissonance. Um, it's because they, if, if they have to, are forced to uh, accept that, yeah, maybe implicitly or subconsciously I've, I've had white privilege that I now have to actually deal with that rationally and they don't want to do that because it takes away their safe perspective on the history they've been given that's been taken from us and they've given to us. It, it uh, makes them have to realize that maybe they are treated differently by the police when they're stopped. It makes them think maybe they do get lighter sentences when they go before a judge or that their student does get better treatment in the classroom. They don't want to have to deal with that. So they want to act like uh, we've made we've gotten rid of slavery. You can get a job. You can vote. You should be happy your life. So this this stuff you, that you're talking about racism. It really doesn't exist. If you just work hard and put yourself up by your bootstraps like we did, you wouldn't have this problem. And so your life matters just like ours. You just don't want to take personal responsibility and you're blaming us and taking us out of our safe zone. Mm -hmm. Got you, got you, got you. Sequilla, are you there? Yes, I am here. I was just trying to make it a little bit more hospi hospitable. Um, <laughs> it's kind of... I didn't know I was going to be a part of this, but I do appreciate it. Yeah, me neither. It. Yeah, yeah, I didn't I, know I, neither I, one of y'all was going to be a part of it. <laughs> me, me neither. <laughs> and I'm glad you jumped in because we seem to have uh, lost Mr. Mr. Rodney. So it's all good, man. We just, you know, this this particular topic was very important. And it's one, it's one episode of a 10-episode series. And all of this was put together by Miss Anaya Brown. So this is this is very important to her. So... You know, we got to have this conversation. Um, bef uh, but, why, but why is All Lives Matter problematic with problematic with Black Lives Matter, in your opinion, uh, Shaquilla? Um, well, I, I agree with what um, Martin said, and what um, Ms. Brown said. And furthermore, we have to think about the narrative that has been spun as far as it's always been we were the fault. We were the aggressor. We were the agitators. Anytime we would speak out against anything from slavery to the civil rights movement, we were the people, like Martin said, who was um, disturbing the status quo. So when you say all lives matter, um, you, you take away the personal responsibility from everybody who's been participating in it, participated in it, whether it was consciously or unconsciously, or actively, and you don't necessarily need to be a, 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 a white man in a business suit in a boardroom to have been part of that. But the, the very fact that a lot of um, non-Black people or white people uh, don't actively stand out against racism, or um, for instance, um, we all know um, the situation with Kyla Kaepernick. I'm still waiting for a formal apology for him because him and the two other football players kneeled when it was unpopular. Now you see everybody else kneeling. Right. You see the NBA has the Black yeah. Lives Matter, which I love it, but um, I, I feel like it's like a Band-Aid on a gaping wound, and we need to acknowledge the several people, the several athletes and, and um, com um, companies who was doing it when it was when it was unpopular. But, you know, Kyle Kaepernick still hasn't been um, playing, and they've been giving him the runaround, and now it's a trend. So when, when it's a trend to be part of our culture or to, to stand up for what's right, 
they they come out of the woodwork. But when it's right. unpopular, then you don't see any any of it. You see uh, the the man in the White House calling people disparaging names, and you see everybody else um, following suit. Yeah, right, right. I, I definitely I definitely hear what you're saying because one thing I did notice is that. Um, Black Lives Matter, it was announced, you know, and all of that stuff. And it was a lot of people in the move. Is, is there a certain amount of people in the movement? Can anybody join the Black Lives Matter movement or is there any mm -hmm. credentials to it or anything? Is there mm -hmm. is there a, a race, a certain mm -hmm. race that need, it could be anybody, right? Yep. Anybody. So let me ask you this. Let me ask all of you this. Do you feel like there's more black people in the Black Lives Matter movement or a more mixed group? You know, in the, the chapter I was in in Sacramento, that actually was was uh, uh, at the meetings I went to. There were actually, I think, if the ratio was not equal, when I say uh, uh, Caucasian to to black, it, it, sometimes there are actually more white people in the room than black people. Um, so it, it was a very diverse group. Got you, got you. Now, uh, what let me see what I wanted to say. Anaya, you got something you want to add to that? Um, yeah, I think that. When we look at Black Lives Matter, I don't think that we should just look at police brutality. Um, because like I said earlier, we, as Black people, we reap the, the consequences of systemic oppression everywhere. So when I personally think about Black Lives Matter, I'm thinking about the fact that Black women, they die in childbirth at extreme rates that are way beyond a Caucasian woman or an Asian woman or a Hispanic or Latina woman would. Um, I think it's, I think we have to have a more open mind and not just look at police brutality because it doesn't end there. It doesn't just start there either. Right. Yeah, I definitely feel you there. I, I definitely do think it's bigger than br police brutality. Well, one, if you guys are just tapping in, this is the Just Be Show. This series is called Civil Discourse with Miss Anaya Brown down here. That's my girl, yo. She got a lot going on for herself. She's going to be the next, uh, Oh, Michelle Obama or somebody. Is she going to be the next something? <laughs> but she has so much going on, guys. And uh, for the people that do follow me, you you can understand this is something new. This is the first episode of Civil Discourse with Anaya Brown. If you're just tuning in, please share this video. Share this live experience so that we can all get involved. Um, just to throw some of the comments out there, Anaya, I'm sure this one is for you right here. Miss Ross, the Queen of Hearts. Big shout out to Miss the Queen of Hearts, man. She says she's so beautiful. You're definitely, you're damn sure right. She's very gorgeous and intelligent. I love it. I love it. Rodney that says, uh, "Black or all lives matter. It is to discount Black Lives Matter." I can agree with you there. Um, what I what I wanted to do is one by one. I want you guys to describe a situation in history. Or in the current, or the, you know, or the of right now, and um, where Black lives did not matter. And um, who want to go first? That'd take sorry, us a whole we, we lost, long we lost time. time. <laughs> okay, can you hear me? <laughs> I can hear you now. All right, I want each one of you to describe one situation each. That has happened. Oh shoot! Hold on. That has happened in in the in the present time or in the past, where black the Black Lives Matter movement would have been of some help. Where Black Lives Matter, where Black Lives did not matter, pretty much. So I um, I'm not. Oh. No, please. Okay, I would say in the instance of Breonna Taylor, um, I feel that in an intersectional way, um, with her being a woman also, I think that Black Lives Matter could have pulled together a lot more for her. Um, when the Black Lives Matter movement started, we really focused on the men. And that isn't wrong in any way, it's not wrong. Um, because we don't have a lot of people in the world who advocate for black men. But I think that with Breonna Taylor specifically, I feel like when she was murdered and the information got out, um, it just kind of created like a 24 hour thing. And our black women are the most disrespected and neglected group in America. So I think that Black Lives Matter um, in general could have pulled through more for her. 
All right, cool, cool. Now, Martin, by listening to her, you do you understand the question a little better? Yes. All right, give me a time and give me a moment of time, brother. <laughs> you know, um, I, I'd be hard pressed to, to come up with an incident where I felt that they could have been more um, attentive or assertive, um, because um, I best just based on my awareness of different events that have happened that I have seen them be involved. I don't remember maybe uh, maybe a higher level of, of um, support specifically uh, by name for Colin Kaepernick and for Eric Reed uh, when they were alone uh, in, in their in their conquest um, and, and helping with you know shape reshape or refocus the narrative that uh, was hijacked to try to make it sound like we were dealing we were protesting the flag versus, uh, the, the issue, and, and even to that, um, uh, myself, I'm, I'm not shaved right now because I wasn't expecting him. I'm, I'm actually in Mississippi right now uh, on quarantine for, uh, so that's why I'm growing a bread, but I'm, on, I'm in the military. And, uh, and so when the Colin Kaepernick uh, uh, saga was happening and people were actually denigrating or, or expecting us in the military to be supportive against him, I, I probably would have been nice to have more Black Lives Matter support us people in uniform as well, um, as far as our plight in trying to to stand with Colin Kaepernick. But but I don't know if that really came to to their to their um, to their to their scope in the first place. Got you, got you. Yeah, man. Well, well, while while I'm talking to you, before I get to Miss Shaquilla down there, man, um, do do you experience a lot of racism in the military? I'm not sure if you're allowed I, to answer that. <laughs> uh, I'm a free person still. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> got you. Uh, you know, I, so I came in. I'm gonna date myself here. I, I came in uh, at late '86, um, and for the first four years. Um, I experienced, I'm talking blatant, in your face, not even trying to hide it, uh, racism. Um, and fortunately, the old, older uh, older uh, black gentleman talked me into, you know, schooled me on how to play the game and survive in a, in a racist situation and still accomplish. Uh, but after, after the first maybe four or five years, for the most part, uh, most of the people that have supported me and mentored me have been white. Um, I've still had some pockets here and there, but but as a systemic situation in the military, no, I, I can't honestly say that I've experienced that. As well as the jobs I've had, I've, uh, because I've worked on some um, anti-terrorism things, uh, I, I, I have worked with, with many police officers, those who were reservists, who were cops on the outside, as well as cops on the, in the military. And I've had, so I can't even, I can't even join the all cop, cops are bad bandwagon and, right. and because because i've had too many experiences to 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 make that general claim and and, and i think people who have had those such as myself we'd lose cred credibility if we acted like we've only had negative experiences right well man uh, yeah i definitely had to ask that question that's one question that's kind of been on my mind Ever since all this been going on with the police and all of that, I'm like, dang, I wonder. So I'm glad you came on saying that you was military so that I could get a gist <laughs> of that. I, I can get that answer for me. Uh, Shaquilla. Yes. Can you give me a moment in time where um, you feel like a situation would have turned out for the better if Black Lives Matter would have would have approached it pretty much? I would say um, in general education, because education is so important in our communities. And I just feel like um, with respect to Nevada and the standards here in Nevada for history, there's not specific elements that, that say, you know, teaching uh, African American history, teaching Latino history, and even teaching indigenous history, not enough. And it's not it's not valued enough in this state. We are 49 in the country, by the way, uh, in terms of education, it's not valued enough in the state. So if we are not teaching everyone in the classroom uh, about 
the history of, of America, the true history, then it's so easy for the students, um, especially those of us who are not raised in our community, to go back home and watch TV or um, participate in the inherent biases of their community and, and not have any challenge of it because if they don't have um, daily interactions with us, if we're not being highlighted and celebrated in our history books, then it can't be uh, enough of a change. So I think we need to be more um, engaged in changing um, how history and how how we're we're represented in the classroom as, as well. Over I would think I would say eighty percent of the teachers in this country are white. And how many uh, of that per- of our percentage of teachers are black men? Very, very little. So we don't even see our black men represented in the classroom. Um, Latino men are not really uh, represented in the classroom, even though, you know, we might be on topic. But I'm just saying in terms of having the master narrative being retold and retold and retold, it's not enough of us okay. in education to yeah. combat the the, the um, false narratives or or the, the biases that happen daily. Facts. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, them definitely facts, man. Uh, Rodney wanted to give a shout out to you guys and said shout out to all the folks that joined the show tonight to support me. We know we love you. We love you, Rodney. What do you say? Technical difficulties struck, but the folks that are on are doing a great job. They are, sir. They are. And thank you for inviting them. Even though I was unaware, it's all good <laughs> because it turned out well. And I'm sure I'm sure Miss Anaya loved it herself because, yeah, this is this is big on her. He also says there are five percent of teachers who are black. Five percent. Wow. y'all. Think about that. Hold on. Let me jump on here real quick. We're talking about five percent. y'all. Five percent of all teachers in the, in, in the United States are black. That's sad. Why is that? Why is that? Think about that. So if you're ever interested in teaching, go for it, especially if you got that black skin color. Go do what you got to do, not only to support all of the students, but to give extra support to the black students in the community. Guys, we have to tap in. We got to tap in and get it right. So just to move on a little bit. Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. We got a question. Joshua Fast. Does anyone think the two groups could ever unite as one? Black Lives Matter, All Lives Matter. Go ahead, uh, yes, and I wanted to mention that earlier um, because I am from New York, the East Coast. Big shout out to New York, New York City. And growing up, we had teachers from everywhere. And I think that uh, the system uses um, different strategies to keep us apart. Um, at one of the <laughs> rallies that was held at um, Doolittle Park by um, Minister Stretch Sanders, I seen a lot of Latino people. A lot, um, yes. I took some pictures of them. Um, one um, gentleman looked really young. Said had a, a, a picture, a post of the the Mexican flag that said Latinx for Black Lives Matter. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's important that we do embrace that connection. And like I, like I said, I'm a teacher, so I have Latinos um, in my class. I have our black children in that class. I also have some white children in that class, some Filipino. Um, but a, a good majority of our school is Latino. And mm-hmm. as educators, we have to bridge that gap and show that we do have a line in common. So, yes, we need to embrace and, and see our commonalities rather than any differences. Got you, beautiful, beautiful. Martin, you look like you got a lot to say, brother. Speak to me. <laughs> you know what? I actually, actually uh, I, uh, matter of fact, shout, shout to my friends, Aquila. It's good to see you, sis. Um, uh, I was also at that rally and it, it uh, with, with uh, brother Stretch, and the, the the group was so diverse. It was it was absolutely beautiful uh, to see all that. So, so bottom line answer to your question is yes. I think the two in in theory. And I say in theory, theory because I'm hoping that at some point we don't need either group because everyone then becomes one people because the groups were, co- were created be- uh, to take a stance against what should be inherent human decency. But um, it was see- seeing that that diverse group and, and that's unfortunate it took watching uh, George Floyd die in front of our face in nine minutes for them to write like, oh, crap. You guys really do have a valid argument. I think, uh, unfortunately, that's that's what happened. Um, but so, do I think we have the potential 
to to eradicate the separation yes do i think it will happen happen quickly no this we still have a couple of generations of people with the old mindset who are not going to change because it, it takes them out of their comfort zone but we have so many young people who are um in this age of aquarius are awakened and, and not trying to hear a lot of the, the divisive crap that their parents and grandparents have fed into them that that I think there is hope. Uh, but we could regress if groups like Black Lives Matter and others take their foot off the gas and let the let the country go back to sleep. Right. I definitely agree with you there. You got to keep pushing forward no matter what. As soon as you slow up, it's going to disappear because that's what happened in the world today no matter what so all of the people that's a part of the black lives movement never give up never give up keep pushing focus on being better than yesterday all time all the ways anaya you got something to say i, I hear your i see your mind over there going <laughs> speak to me girl all right so i agree with mr martin i do think that two groups can come together um, I'm Gen Z, and so our generation, we are big on trying to break down and stop generational curses. Um, we are very in tune with ourselves, and we're constantly figuring out what it is that's wrong with the previous generation and trying to, I guess, correct, respectfully, correct the errors of their ways so we don't infect the next generation with that. Um, and so for me in my experience, me witnessing the interaction of just Gen Z period, um, absolutely, I've seen a lot of togetherness, the, the amount of support that I've seen from different ethnicities and different races, um, just from my daily life has been, has been an example of that. Now, across the nation, It'll take a long time. <laughs> It'll take a long time. And just because, um, like Mr. Martin said, there are older generations who are going to continue to feed their ideas and feed their thoughts um, to younger generations inside of their households. And so mm -hmm. we, we, we see the fruits of, of that work in itself. Um, will we see it in my day? Possibly not. But I think that it would be a a major success if we could keep the ball rolling because Black Lives Matter, we've been cheering this for forever, not just since 2013. That's when we got the the logo and, and the, the chant and the mission right. and the flag. Right. But this has always been our concern. This has always been our life, you know, and it's not just the culture. This is, again, it's our life. Um, and so we'll forever cheer that on. But I think as far as social media goes, we have to keep running it up and keep tapping in and keep blasting black lives matter because we can't we can't it's it's too big of an issue to ignore you know it's a giant elephant in the room and to ignore it would be a slap in the face of the ancestors so right definitely have I to definitely feel you away. man i i loved your answer that was a beautiful answer before yes, we was. do carry on let me give uh, and and i'm sure we all agree to this we i want to we as a whole right here would like to give minister stretch sanders so much respect, so much props, y'all. It's a big shout out to you, brother. The, the things that you do in the Las Vegas community and the way that it spreads across everywhere, man. Big shout out to you, brother. Keep it up. Keep respect. it up. And I'm going to say it again. Keep it up. He is doing his thing. I've been yeah. trying to get Minister Stretch on the show for about three months. You know what I'm saying? So if y'all got any plugs, please let me know. He's a busy man. He's a busy, he a busy man. man. He be having so much going on, man. But I love it. I love to see an in him, and, and you can tell he's so genuine and about it. So yes. again, big shout out to you, Stretch. Man, he he stretching for greatness. That's his hashtag. I love it. Yeah, the boy be killing it. Um, to to keep it moving though, I have two questions. Um, that just popped up in my mind right now. One is is I wanted to ask you guys: Do you think that? Uh, uh, do you think that if social media, social media, in your opinion, definitely has a huge impact on how things have been going about in the last few years? Um, but if social media was not in existence, do you feel like the Black Lives Matter movement would have so much growth at this point? Absolutely not. I, 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 I say unequivocally, I think because of 
cell phone videos and social media is the only reason why we, whether Black Lives Matter or or people who are not uh, even a member of that organization, is that's the only reason why we're getting any traction. Going back again to George Floyd or even Freddie Gray um, um, or any of them, um, if white America had not seen the whole eight minutes and 46 seconds and they, and, and they couldn't hide behind well, what happened before because it all happened right in front of their face, we still would not be in this place that we're in right now. Despite Toronto, tr- none of them, they, the media still didn't get to watch those those people die. So for the for white America, those were still just uh, just another story. There's probably something behind it. She was she had an ex boyfriend who was a drug dealer anyway. Any excuse they could have made to dismiss. But so if it wasn't for the cell phone video and the whole eight minutes and forty six seconds in front of everybody's face, where they couldn't couldn't even deny it, we still wouldn't be having this conversation that we're having. I don't mean us, but right, collectively. Right. In general, we wouldn't be. We, this wouldn't be. Well, I, actually, you know what? I mean, I mean too, if it wasn't for that, and it wasn't for, unfortunately, even though I don't condone it necessarily. If it wasn't for that and the violence that is now taking place, they still would not be paying us attention. Right. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with you there, brother. Social media is. It, it, it sucks, man, because I actually don't like to do a whole bunch of social media <laughs> until I created this particular show, until I became a, a influencer, you know. But social media has taken things from minute to big as hell really, really quick. Uh, Manaya, what's your opinion? Um, again, Gen Z uh, practically grew up on the Internet. Um, I think that there are I absolutely agree with you, Martin. I really do. Um, but I think that as far as social media being um, being a tool, I personally feel like the mainstream media is controlled. Um, and so with social media, you're able to kind of yes. weave, yes. bob and weave through all of that. Um, I'm not saying that Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat is where you need to go to get your news, of course. But it's not as censored as mainstream media would be um, concerned. And so you can go through and you can wire your social media to present information specifically about certain things to you. So you're not constantly bothered with um, things like people's pictures and food and stuff like that. But I think as far as getting messages across the board and generating mass support, I think that it was really beneficial to use social media. Um, Again, like I was saying earlier, when I was getting or receiving support from um, Black Lives Matter, I'm having friends all the way from the UK DM me and blast on Twitter that they're having their own marches and protesting for Black Lives. So I think that there are some benefits of using social media. Um, But again, I just don't think that you get all of your news from it. So there are pros and cons to it, but I definitely think that it's helped, especially with Gen Z, considering that the internet is what we know. So... That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I agree with I agree with all of you guys. Shaquilla, I'm about to get to you right after this comment, sweetheart. Rodney Smith says we have to carve out our niche, our niche, however you say it. Y'all always mess it up <laughs> just for us like this show that we can trust. Oh, man, brother. I'm, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Um, uh, my goal is always to give a platform for anything positive, no matter what. You know, as long as it ain't selling drugs in the streets, then I'm for it. I'm for it all the way. Um, it, it, the point of this whole platform is to get your message out in the most positive way possible. That's why all the comments that come up that sometimes be negative, I don't even show them. We'll talk about it and we're going to get right past it. <laughs> but uh, thanks, Rodney. I definitely appreciate that. Shaquilla, what's your opinion, sweetheart? I I definitely agree with uh, Martin and Ms. Brown um, about the advantages of social media. And, and um, people such as yourself who provide a platform on top of a platform so that we can voice um, our opinions. And what's great about that is a person like you, a person like um, Rodney, Martin, and Ms. Brown can just step out of their home and just decide one day, you know, I'm going to say something. And I think that's why social media is important because maybe some people um, was dormant, or maybe some people could say, oh, I didn't know about it. But with social media, which many people are connected to, there's no excuse. 
And also with uh, Facebook, Twitter, et cetera, we can see who our friends really are. We can see who our frenemies really are because it's important for us to know what others are, are, are thinking or what the ideology is because we're running around having coffee and tea with these people and they're not really for us. And I'm not just saying that if, if you're white or, or black, any, any skin color, if you're not for justice, if you're not for Black Lives Matter, what its true mission is, if you're not for uplifting us, then you're against us. And we can't straddle the fence on that on that um, issue because we've been we've been brought to this country in chains. So there's no oh that's in the past or let's let's move on. There is no moving on. You're either for us or against us, and we can't we can't emphasize that enough. So social media provides us with that that inside look. Okay, let me let me see what my friends' pages really look like. Let me see what they really been doing because we don't want to break bread with the people on the false pretenses. We want to know, are you for us? Or if if uh, we get pulled over, you're going to be like, well, what was they doing? Did they have something in their car? Did they have a criminal record? Was their license? All these other excuses um, that that's really not a reason to treat us any, any um, way. Um, we need to know if you're that type of person. So social media does that for us. Yeah, that's cool. That's cool. I want to give a big. You, what 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 countries you said? The UK and where else? Anaya. The US, oh. um, Canada, and the UK. The, big shout out to the UK and in Canada <laughs> for being a part of this Black Lives Matter movement, y'all. It's gonna take more than just us here in the United States of you know whatever they want to call it, but it's definitely gonna <laughs> take. It, it it has to be a global movement. It can't only be a global movement when someone like George Floyd gets a knee on his neck and dies after eight and a half minutes. <laughs> it can't be a global movement only when Brianna, the Brianna Taylors lose their life. You know, the Trayvon Martins. It has to be a global movement always, always until change occurs. If change doesn't occur, then we got to get it pushing. We got we got to keep it going. Rodney says in Germany and big shout out to Germany too. wherever y'all at all over the globe. If you're doing your thing for the black lives matter movement, we appreciate you. We appreciate you, yes. but don't let up. Keep your foot on the gas. Cause we got to keep pushing no matter what. So the next question I want to ask you guys is, and this is actually towards our black community. Um, for the black folks that still sitting at home and not doing anything to get involved in the Black Lives Matter movement. Why do you think that is? Do you think it's fear or? Oh, now you go first. What was the question one more time? For all of the black folks that's sitting at home mm -hmm. and not doing anything to, to put, not putting any effort into the Black Lives movement. Why do you think that is? So, <laughs> Again, I will say that Black people, we have some sort of PTSD, um, and for good reason. I think that being involved in the protests and seeing the effects of what that could entail with um, the police retaliating pretty forcefully, um, that's, that brings negative feelings. Um, it generates fear. Um, that maybe they, they can be next, you know? And so, um, like I said earlier, we've always been chanting this. Black Lives Matter has always been a part of our lives, our daily lives. Um, but maybe it's just that they don't see it getting better, um, which is very rational to believe. Um, so to that, I would just say to don't give up. You know, we have our future generations who are, who are gonna take the baton from Gen Z and keep it running, you know? So um, don't give up, feed the knowledge to the children because we're gonna be the ones who are gonna try and make the change that black people need. And not just for black people, um, we can't recognize, I wanted to say earlier, um, all lives don't matter until black lives matter. And until black lives matter, you know, we have to do a lot of work. So feed the knowledge, you know, it's okay to share that you have a fear, but don't let the fear stop you from being able to pass the baton to someone who could who could probably push a little bit further than you can. Got you. Whoa, that was well said. You see why she gonna be somebody? Do y'all see it? 
<laughs> uh, Shaquilla, what what's your opinion? Why do you think the people, the the black folks that's sitting at home, does not get involved with the with the Black Lives Matter movement? I do think and agree as far as um, past trauma and just a sense of hopelessness. But I also think that we have to uh, remind each other why we're here and why we do what we do. And although fear is a very, a very real thing or a very real feeling, it, it's more scarier not to do anything and know that our sons and daughters, our uncles and our mothers and, and fathers out there in danger. Um, being a black person in America, that's literally a dangerous thing to be. It, it doesn't matter where you are, it doesn't matter how much money you have, it just matters that you're black. And I think that we have to remember that because that's what we're fighting for. I think people have to reach inside themselves and take out that courage, take out that 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 anger and transform it into something that's going to help the movement. Because we all have family, we all have friends that we love daily. And just from being the color of our skin, we may not see them tomorrow. So I think that people just have to get into the, the spirit of, of Fear is not an option to stop us. We have to keep going. We have to keep moving. Um, even from from us being in chains, I'm sure uh, Harriet Tubman was fearful. I'm sure uh, uh, Nat Turner was fearful. I'm sure uh, Sojourner Truth was fearful. But our greater mission is motivated by the love for our people. And so that's what we have to do to us into the future. <laughs> right. <laughs> I hear you, girl. I hear you. <laughs> Martin, speak to me, brother. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm in a room where the light keeps going out here. It's all good. Uh, so I, I do regular speeches. Well, I say, I won't say speeches, more, more facilitated facilitated discussion. I do presentations and, and always, always start off my presentations with going through um, the stages uh, that I would list, showing the stages of a society. And one of the stages that societies get to is a place of complacency. And then complacency so complacency leads to lack of morality, lack of morality leads to disorder, then then chaos, whatever. But I think part part one, my answer to the question is we collectively have gotten to a place of complacency. Uh, collectively. We are used to the BS. And so now we've gotten, I use the word comfortable in the BS because we know the game, we know it's BS. And therefore going back to uh, what my sister was saying is there's no hope. They don't see things, they don't see things are getting better. So, well, might as well just be complicit in, in where we are. Uh, so, and so you add that to the years and the education system of learning the European uh, perspective on history. And you add that to um, the what we experience, well, excuse me, our, our lack of unity, as in we, we're, so, we're we're such in disarray as a community, we can't even, in some cases, even decide on what the issues are, and so we're a house divided. And of course, as Abraham Lincoln said, a uh, house divided, we can't stand. Uh, we don't. We don't. Uh, the, some of the speeches I do are on economic power, our political clout. We don't. We can't exercise our political clout because we stay uneducated and ignorant on local elections. On we don't vote. Uh, we don't educate ourselves on who's running. We don't pay attention to who's running for judge seats. We we don't do those things. So when we have no power, we have no hope, and then we don't own anything. We don't own the banks. We don't own the grocery stores. We have no hope. It's easy to go to the liquor store, get our beer, get our henny, and head to the house and, right. and kick it. Oh, I'm sorry, in the Fritos. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, it just, you know, because that's what we're used to. And, and, oh, we use, and, we, and we're used to the music that denigrates our women. And we're used to, we're used to calling each other N's and B's. And we're used to watching stuff like Love and Hip Hop and stuff like that to see what a depiction of a strong black woman or a strong black man or what relationships are supposed to be, and you we end up in a situation where we're we're, we're not in a, in a position to win, even if we did come off the couch. 
Right. I definitely feel you, man. You just heard what these three beautiful black people have said. Man, if you're sitting at home and you're not doing nothing about it, get uncomfortable. If you're comfortable just sitting at home, get uncomfortable. We need you. We need you in this movement. We need we we all have to unite so that we can make this happen. It hasn't happened in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. So we need everybody off the couch. On so if you're gonna be on the couch, get on social media. Get on social media and blast it. Blast it. If we can get people from Germany, the UK, Canada, and all of these other places to speak up for us, you can speak up for us too, y'all. If you're fearful. It's the same fear sitting in the house. Anything can happen in the world. Anything can happen. Boom. Uh, a meteor will come and blow us up. Then guess what? You know what I mean? It's, it's nothing, nothing, nothing. Everything is penetratable. Period. So don't be afraid, y'all. Get uncomfortable. Let's get to it and let's get it popping. I want to throw a couple of a couple more of these comments up here, y'all, before we push on. Rachel says, I'm sorry, Rachel. I cannot pronounce your last name. I don't even want to try. I don't want to kill it. But Rachel says they don't understand the power of one voice. I definitely agree with that. I agree with that. Bessie says some don't know history and some still have slaves mentality. Lack of knowledge. Ooh, if that ain't the truth. My main man good. right here, Rodney, says keep in mind that Dr. King only had about a 28 percent approval rating from black people when he was alive. Historically, we are slow to join most movements. Oh, we ain't that. No, that was real right there. <laughs> mm -hmm. That was super powerful. Bessie says a black American is the only race that has no home. Africa says we're spoiled. All others fear us. They fear strength in numbers for show. And Rodney says, Bessie Riley, we have the potential power to change that. And now is the time for sure. For sure. Yes. Yes. I definitely agree with that there. Uh, Manaya, did you have anything else you wanted to add on before we get these closing statements um no i love the discussion everything is hitting everything right on the head i love it all right cool 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 well i ran out of key points to say <laughs> if y'all got some key points y'all want to add in there please add them that's fine if not then we're gonna um it, it, well let me say this to the audience if you guys have any thing else that you would like to throw out there let me know we can bring it up on the screen and talk about it for sure for sure um one one last question that i did want to ask um ladies and gentlemen ladies and gentlemen <laughs> is that um as far as the black lives matter movement what do you feel is the next step what what needs to be done next to keep keep with the progression anybody can go Legislation, right. legislation and <laughs> action from local leaders, from our state leaders. Um, we, a lot of black people were not put in positions of power to make anything really effective. Um, and so it's really important for us to vote. Like you said, it's very important for us to, um, Martin, like you said, to research the people who are going to be um, campaigning because there's, there's no representation for us. I don't see a lot um, of politicians who look like me. So I think it's really important for us to reach out to our leaders, our state and our local leaders, to help and present legislation that that will punish behavior that essentially oppresses us. And maybe that is too far-fetched of, of an idea, but I think that's the next step. And I think that if it's not my generation that's able to do it, if it's not your generation that will be able to do it, then it will be the future ones to do it. Beautiful, beautiful. Shaquilla, what do you think the next step is for the BLM movement? Uh, education and, and sharing the knowledge. Um, people such as yourself and Ms. Brown and Martin and uh, Rodney Smith, Minister Stretch Sanders, very, um, a lot of people in the community, they provide that key person to go to and ask questions. And I think we cannot be afraid to ask questions and get involved. Don't be afraid to say, I don't know, because that's when we stay silent. So I think educating ourselves about the about the system, like Ms. Brown said, about the laws, what our rights are as business owners, um, as educators, as parents, we need to know what our rights are. And, and if the legislation is inherently racist, which most of it is, then we need to 
elect people who are going to change that. So we have to educate ourselves first, get together with like-minded individuals and share the knowledge to our people who may not be seeing, um, seeing it as we are. Beautiful, beautiful. Martin, take me home, baby. Uh, two, two, two words come to mind. And, and, uh, and again, uh, uh, going back to my days when I actually was a member of the Sacramento chapter, those two words are marketing and credibility. Marketing, what I mean by marketing, Everyone associates Black Lives Matter with uh, protests, police brutality. But when I was in Black Lives Matter, we had several different committees that had uh, that they were talking about uh, getting involved with education. They were talking about health education uh, for the community. They were talking about other things and other committees other than police brutality. But we're only but Black Lives Matter is only known for activism because of police brutality. So, so having that more visible marketing, the other aspects of, of the uh, of the uh, group would be, I think, more beneficial to the group uh, when it comes to credibility. And, and, and I'm, I'm going to go back to, to the other side. So, again, I'm one of those who, who likes credibility and integrity. And, and, I, and I love when uh, Yana Van Zandt says it's called a thing a thing. So to, when it comes to credibility, I'm looking at we can't look at every case. And I think every case, even when we are talking about police brutality, whatever, it needs to be looked in on its own merits and not just automatically jump into the, well, the cop was white and the person was black, therefore police brutality. What were the facts in that particular case? If we did more of that, and there was a specific incident that I was involved in when I was in a chapter that caused some disagreement between me and the leader, because there was a case where the facts clearly were the person, the black person, was in the wrong and the person was armed, but they wanted to treat that same case like any other case. And I'm like, you lose credibility when you do that. We would have more credibility if we called it. No, we need to hold ourselves accountable. So Black Lives Matter said, hold on, we're gonna hold our own community accountable for the misdeeds or the misbehavior. And, and just as well as we try to hold the cops accountable, I think that would do go a long way for our credibility. Beautiful, beautiful, man. That's that was awesome, guys. I definitely appreciate you guys being on the show. And Miss Anaya, how you feel? How you feeling? You all right? You still over there nervous? I'm so happy. I won't <laughs> scream. I'm so happy. <laughs> awesome. So I want to ask you guys one last bonus question. We're not. We're actually not gonna get into it, but it's gonna be able to lead to a another another episode. I just want you to say yes or no on this next question. All right. We're gonna start with Sequilla. Defund the police. Yes or Change no? the language. Change the, Change language. the language. I can go with that. Martin, <laughs> defund the police. No. Anaya, defund the police. Yes. Yes. All right. All right. Now that's going to lead into another episode. I'm sure a lot of people going to have some comments about that one, man. Before we head out, before we get the, the closing statements from you guys, let me go ahead and throw this up right here. Rodney, man, let me say thank you to Rodney. Uh, I know he kind of cut you off down now. Now I see you, though. Rodney says <laughs> black people must establish our black agenda and find our candidates to support it politically when legislation is needed. We also need to have local community leaders with their proven record in the community to help organize us. If I can, I can agree more with you, Rodney. Um, and, and be before we close out, Rodney. You dope, man. You you a dope soul, brother. You just brought on these two people. I had no idea they were coming on, but it turned out to be a beautiful episode. For it to be Anaya's Civil Discourse with Anaya Brown's first episode, I am super proud. Have a look. She down there dancing. She proud of it, too. Um, how we end Thank every so episode. Much. Oh, nah, you're welcome. And we got nine more to go. Now more to go. And they just going to get more and more juicier. I love the interaction. Um, Martin and Shaquilla, I want to thank you guys to the, with the utmost for even tuning in. You know, um, you guys are more than welcome to jump back on any other uh, following episodes. We're going to be doing this particular one every Friday at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Um, I don't know what time it is out there for y'all, but <laughs> you're more than welcome to definitely jump on. The way that I end every episode of all of my shows is you can tell the people where they can follow you, um, if you even want to be followed, uh, where they can find you, just stuff like that. Just a little bit about your social media following, um, and you can say whatever you want for the next 30 seconds. And um, ladies first, Shaquilla, we're going to start with you, sweetheart. Let them know. 
Uh, thank you for your time and just allowing me to be here. Uh, Facebook, you can uh, check me out at Wally West. I'm not really big on social media like that, but when it comes to voicing our concerns about the community, I am vocal. So uh, thank you for this opportunity and I look forward to the next show. Sweet, sweet. And I definitely look forward to having you on the next show. And, be, and when you leave, make sure you go check out the Just Be Show. We talk about some good stuff. <laughs> Martin. Uh, uh, Let uh, him know, thank brother. You, thank you, King. Uh, I, I was not expecting this. This this was actually great. Uh, I like the impromptu re realness. Uh, so blessings to you. Um, on Facebook, I am at, at uh, Ma'atin. That's M-A apostrophe A-T. Walker. And um, I take all followers, and I do quote the truth on there. Um, I forget. I think of my IG name right now, but uh, I can you, I can always post it on my uh, on my Facebook page. And also, if you're on Meetup, uh, the, the 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 app called Meetup, I'm within the Black Cosmos group, and you can see what we're about and, and what we're trying to accomplish in the community as well. Um, our, our leader is Lauren Antoinette, and she's doing great things. Um, and what they were trying to give back to the community. Beautiful, beautiful, man. And uh, man, before we end, I just want to tell you, brother, thank you for your service. Thank you, peace. Real talk, man. Thank you for your service. That's real, man. I I've had family members that was in the military, so I definitely give you a utmost respect, brother. Big ups to you for real. Anaya! <laughs> <laughs> Let them know where they can find you, sweetheart. Alrighty, so on Facebook, I am Anaya Brown, A-N-I-Y-A-H, brown like the color. Um, and on Instagram, I am spoiled in love with an underscore. Sweet, right. sweet, sweet. Look, she is, she's spoiled, y'all. She didn't got, she the first person to got her own series on my show. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> but that's not why she got this, this part on this show, y'all. She, I allowed her a series on the Jess B show because she had a lot to say. And she has a lot going on and she's going somewhere. So I definitely want you guys to go and support Miss Juneteenth Nevada, my girl, Anaya Brown. She definitely deserves it, y'all. Myself. I'm Tim. Mean, you can call me Timothy B. You can call me Jess B. You can find me on the Jess B show everywhere you look. My my personal, if you want to see my TikToks, crazy stuff I'll be doing, just my life in general. I vlog on my own personal Instagram and it's I am Jess B. Um, yeah, man. And and shout out a lot of love to everybody. Like you, we, we got to step out. We got to step out of our comfort zone and get out here and make this movement matter. It, it, it's it, it's inevitable that we all have to come together. We all have to unite because all lives cannot matter before black lives matter. It's as simple as that. The thing is, is we've never mattered. We ready, it's time for us to matter too. All lives cannot matter. I'm gonna say it again. All lives cannot matter until black lives matter. And again, thanks for coming on the show, everybody. And you know how I always end it. I just gotta say three things. I want you to smile, laugh, and definitely motivate. I want you to inspire one person to inspire all. And the last but not least, I'll hit it with this. I